Hi folks, Chris Mask from Eastlink Community TV's Off the Chip Wagon. Hopefully you and your family are doing well and uh, maybe you're finding yourself a little bored looking for that new kitchen project. How about making your own cheese? Yeah, cheese at home. This is my second video on cheese making and uh, this is going to go long, so settle in, grab yourself a beverage for this. Um, the first method that I showed you was the acid-based method, which is where we got our ricotta from. But this method for making cheese involves something called rennet. So this gets us mozzarella, paneer, burrata, stuff like that. Rennet's an interesting little enzyme. It can come from a few places. Uh, you can find it in the stomach of animals that haven't been weaned from their mothers yet. We're actually using a vegetable-based rennet, which you can get from distilling things like nettle and thistle. And I mean, you could even go like old school Bronze Age Roman where it's not quite renin, but it's vinegar. But now you're starting to add hurdles to the process. And trust me, you don't need hurdles because it took a lot of kicks at the can to give you something even remotely presentable for this video. <laughs> so rennet, you can find it in health food stores. You can get it in tablet and liquid form. Make sure you read the back because if it's double strength, you're going to want to cut it before you add it to anything. Um, you can order it off the internet. Really not that hard to source if you uh, look in the right places. Something else you need, citric acid. Now this stuff, pharmacies, again, health food stores, you can order it off the internet. Really not that hard to find. But what those two products together are going to do is it's going to help, number one, our coagulation of those protein chains, and it's also going to balance something called pH. Now you might remember back to your high school science days with acids and bases, when you're doing cheese making, if you end up with something that's too acidic, which means a low pH, you're going to end up with crumbly cheese. And that's not what we're going for here. We want that melty, stretchy, gooey kind of mozzarella, right? So that means we need something with a high pH and a low acid content. So if you can get one of those pH testing kits, again, grocery stores, pharmacies, online, your end product should be somewhere between 5.2 and 5.4 on the pH scale. Something else you're going to need for this, Non-chlorinated water, much like our starter. Bottled water, room temperature, excellent. Run with that. And then we got to get our milk. High fat content milk. Non-homogenized stuff straight from the farm. Excellent, but good luck finding that. So sometimes you have to go with what you have available to you. If you can find buffalo milk, that's a high fat content. Go with that. If you have goat's milk, go with that. The animal with the highest fat content in its milk, it's a hooded seal. But the zoo gets a little testy if you try to milk their animals when you're not supposed to. So just stick with what you find in the store. Anything over basically three and a quarter percent fat content, that's great. You're going to go through just about a full pitcher pack of this stuff here because we are looking at three and three quarter liters of milk. It's going to give you about a pound of cheese. And I mean, this stuff is going to be good for about a week to 10 days. Uh, you can put it in brine and keep it longer. Entirely up to you. You're going to want to eat it pretty quick, though, because it's just that darn delicious. Really, it is worth the effort, but it does take a few kicks at the can just to kind of figure out. So we've got our rennet, we've got our citric acid, we've got our water, and we've got our milk. Before you do anything in terms of cooking, though, sanitize, sterilize everything. Disinfect anything you possibly think that your cheese might come in contact with. That's the one thing that I definitely can say I learned from uh, when I got to spend some time at the Nickel City Cheese Factory here in Sudbury as part of season four of Off the Chip Wagon. Cleanliness, key to cheese making here. Instant read thermometer. This right here, this is your buddy because this is what's going to tell you when things have to happen. Don't run off of time, run off of the thermometer. And the other thing, there are recipes online that say, yeah, you can make this in the microwave too to finish your mozzarella, but I'm hands-on barbecue gloves. So I really want to get my hands all gooey and stretch that cheese. But keep in mind, that's going to happen in water that's 175 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's going to be hot. Get some insulated barbecue gloves. What you're going to start with is your rennet. Boom. We're going to take this. Remember, if you have to dilute it, dilute it. Basically, you need a quarter teaspoon or a quarter of a rennet tablet. You're going to put that into a quarter cup of the non-chlorinated water. Just let it sit on the counter somewhere. And then same water. We want a whole cup of it though to mix in one and a half teaspoons of your citric acid. This right here, as soon as you decide to put your milk on the stove, that goes in. And you'll notice that over the next couple minutes, it's going to start to curdle. And that's what you want. You want to bring it slowly up to 90 Fahrenheit. And that's where your thermometer comes into play here. But you got to watch it because sometimes that temperature can swing real quick. Once it hits 90, that's where 
your rennet now enters the party. And you're going to slowly stir this from the top of the pot all the way to the bottom just to make sure it's well incorporated. You'll do that for about 30 seconds. So sing happy birthday to yourself twice like you're washing your hands. After that, everything is off the element. A lid goes onto the pot and you're going to let it sit for a good five minutes or so. And when you pull the lid off after five minutes, it should look like a custard. And if it doesn't, if it still looks pretty loose, then you're not done yet. A good way to look at it is taking a look at the whey, because that's basically what we have here, curds and whey. If it's got this yellowy kind of color here, this isn't ready. This, this is ready. So this is kind of the color that you're really looking for here if you're going off of that, if you're not just looking at texture. If your cheese breaks at this point, and it's quite possible because you don't get the curd formation, you still end up with a nice ricotta style cheese, so all's not lost. But if it goes into completely fine particles, now you just dumped a pitcher pack of milk down the sink. If you do have that nice custardy kind of texture to it, that's where you're going to now cut it like a chessboard because you're gonna start getting that curd formation like that. But these aren't curds like you'd find for putting on poutine. That involves a couple other ingredients. Uh, what is it? Uh, thermophil culture and uh, calcium chloride, if I'm not mistaken. See, I learned something from my days at the cheese factory. Uh, those curds, we can talk about that another time. This right now is basically the curds and whey and Miss Muffet's getting ready to belly up to the bar here. So you're going to slowly stir that for a good five minutes. I mean, you might even end up going 10 minutes, but you want to make sure that everything is well incorporated there and mixed before you decide to pour it out into a colander. And then you'll push down very gently because you don't want to turn this into mush, but you want to try and get all that whey out of the curds. So get the way out of the way. Different spelling. Could be like a homonym if you set it in the right context. Regardless, um, the more way you get out of it, the better. So while this is draining, what you can do is get yourself a pot of water. And uh, this could be tap water, or if you want, go bottled water to be safe. But that water in the pot has to get up to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Because those curds that you're going to be able to pull out, you want to make sure they're about an inch to two inches. And they're going to be spongy. From here, get your hands involved. And that's why the barbecue gloves come in. Because you're basically going to start to work it into whatever shape you want. And you're going to pull it and you're going to stretch it. It's like making little balloon animals basically out of this. And any time that it starts to tighten up, just put it back into the hot water. And then by the time it comes up and you're all said and done, I mean, you can end up with the little tiny balls of mozzarella like this, which basically are little like bocconcinis. The inside, you can see. Looks nice and creamy. I mean, if it had more of the uh, the lighter inside, I like my cheese, that looks more like this. I mean, you can consider that more like a uh, burrata. But you could also make the larger balls because you're going to end up with about a pound of this. So it all depends on how big you want to go with it. And then what do I want to do with this afterwards? Do I want to just put it into some brine, which you can make with some water and salt and keep it for a while? Or do I want to go put it on the smoker and make myself some smoked mozzarella cheese? Got to cold smoke it. Whatever you decide to do with your mozzarella, that's up to you. But keep the way. Don't just throw it away. We want to keep it because let me tell you, that makes a fantastic base stock for a potato soup. Stay safe, everybody.